Hey guys. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you, Slush, for inviting me, and thanks everybody for coming uh, so early in the morning. I know there was a big supercell party uh, yesterday. I'm here to talk about um, lessons learned in startup land from our own experiences. Um, to introduce myself, my name is in Danish Mikkel Svane, in American I'm Mikkel Svane, um, and I am uh, one of the founders and the CEO of uh, Sendesk. Um, I'm also on Twitter, and it's very important that you have now have my Twitter handle, it's a big part of my job uh, nowadays. But um, starting from the beginning, um, I am Danish, uh, Sendesk as a company was founded in Denmark. How many of you know this place in Copenhagen? Yes, how many of you have been drinking beer there? A lot of you, <laughs> excellent. So now you know my origin. Um, and as you also know that Copenhagen is a fantastic place in the summer, just like Helsinki, but it's also a cold, cold and dark place in the winter. Nevertheless, uh, this is where we built uh, Sendesk. And this, uh, this is my uh, two co-founders uh, and myself. This picture is like six years old, something like that. Um, we were working out of my, uh, my co-founders, Alexander's his kitchen, uh, building Sendesk. And we had some experience from the customer service industry and said like, okay, this industry is incredibly boring, it's incredibly unsexy, let's, let's make this industry a little bit more sexy, let's build a beautiful product for, for the customer service professionals all over the world. Um, so we bootstrapped it for a couple of years, it worked out of my uh, co-founder's kitchen, literally, and uh, in 2009, we were so lucky to raise funding in the US and started our adventure in startup land in uh, California. This picture is from May of this year. We took uh, Sendesk public on the New York Stock Exchange, um, and all of this happened five years after uh, the three of us moved to San Francisco to start building this company. So it has, of course, been a fantastic journey, uh, and uh, we have documented this journey in this new book, Startup Land. Uh, and we will have a little, I think there's a little teaser for that book lying on some tables just outside here if you want to read the first chapter. But you can already now download it on your Kindle. The book it will hit the bookshelves uh, December 8th in the US. Anyways, um, there's many, many stories in the big story around building Sendesk and our adventures in startup land. Um, we, uh, we learned a lot <laughs> on the way, a lot, uh, and it's been a crazy story. We are today a company with uh, 800, uh, almost 800 employees. We have customers in 150 countries. We have almost 50,000 organizations around the world using Sendesk for providing great customer service. And uh, last year, we had revenues in the order of uh, $72 million, the last uh, financial quarter, we had revenues in the order of like $34 million. So we are a company growing quickly and um, with a lot of great uh, stories to tell, all documented in this book. But today, uh, I have 13 minutes left. I'm going to share three highlights, three learnings uh, that I hope that startups and entrepreneurs can learn a little bit from uh, and that we have also shared in the book. First and foremost, uh, <laughs> screw the business plan. Um, when you build a company, uh, it's very, very easy to limit yourself to what you already know. The thing is that the, what we already know is only a small percentage of the total knowledge. We know the things that we know, we're very confident about them, and then we're also relatively confident about the things we know that we don't know. The only problem is that there are so many things we don't know that we don't know. And if you limit yourself to what you know and to what you know you don't know, you will only, you will limit yourself in your ability to create a big opportunity and to create a big market. In our case, the world is a big place. Denmark is a very, very small country. 
we initially, when we set out to build Zendesk, we tried to pitch it to some local companies. We did some local advertising and so on, and we didn't get any customers whatsoever. It took us many years before Zendesk as a company actually got customers in Denmark. But we started to get customers in, our very first customer was a, a telecom company in Ireland. The next company was a chain of gas and convenience stations in uh, Texas. The third company, the third customer was a content management company in New Zealand. We had no idea about these markets. We knew nothing about what we didn't know about these markets. But somehow, these markets represented something that was the future for Sendesk. Also, um, you probably heard this uh, quote before and seen it many times. It's something that Steve Jobs from Apple liked to talk about: create a product for um, create a product for a market that's going to be there, rather than the market that you that you know exists today. And that's very important, simply by introducing a new product, by democratizing access to software, by changing the dynamics of the market, suddenly you can completely redefine the market, create a lot bigger market than what you know today. So if you spend too much time in your business plan on defining the market as it is today, you will miss the big opportunity. I read an interview uh, yesterday with the Nordic GM of uh, Google, and he had this analogy about uh, sausage makers. Um, he said that if you find a sausage maker, he said Copenhagen, but you could just as well think about it as a sausage maker in Helsinki, the ambitions of that sausage maker would be to sell his sausages to uh, people all over Finland. If you find that same sausage maker in San Francisco, his ambitions would be to sell his sausages all over the world. I think that kind of bigger thinking, thinking without limits, thinking about not only what can we do today, but what can we think in the future, I think it's important in building a company and getting your, um, um, you're getting your startup well off the ground. So lesson number one, screw the business plan. Don't limit yourself. Lesson number two, uh, users are people too. This is something that um, today with growth hacking and funnel optimization and millions of internet users, this is something that we sometimes tend to forget. We often uh, consider, we often think about our users just as data. And sometimes it's hard to, it's, sometimes it's easy to forget that there are actually actual people behind uh, the data. We, Sendesk, made a lot of mistakes ourselves. Um, at some point, we uh, felt very confident about our customer base, and we analyzed the data about how people were thinking, uh, were buying our products, and, and we thought we had this good plan for how we could optimize revenue, and at the same time provide what we thought was the best experience for our customers. So we, back in 2010, we introduced this new big pricing change and reconfiguration, and sent out an email, and we thought everything, everybody would be fantastically happy. Um, unfortunately, next morning, we woke up to this. Oops. We woke up to this, sorry. Uh, front page of TechCrunch. Our customers were revolting. They tweeted us, they emailed us, they phoned us down. Uh, um, uh, all day, and we received thousands of emails, thousands of calls, and people didn't understand what we were trying to do. We thought we had this basic, we thought we had this great idea for how we could optimize everything for everybody, but we forgot about the basic communication that they received an email for us that basically said we are going to raise the prices without their involvement, anything like that. At that point, we realized that users are not just users, P users are people too, and in many ways, uh, we learned an important, important lesson there. We um, had to uh, backtrack all the changes. I had to go uh, online on our blog and apologize to everybody, to all our customers, that we forgot for a moment that they were customers, that, that they were people too. They were not only just users and customers. And also to celebrate it and to make sure that we never forgot about this uh, incident, we had T-shirts made with all the worst comments that people had sent to us, um, put them on t-shirts, and had all our employees 
uh, wear them to never forget about um, to never forget about uh, that our users are not only users and customers, they're also people. All righty. Uh, so uh, screw the business plan. Uh, uh, users are people too. Another important fact: businesses. Sorry, businesses are people too. And this is something that is easy to forget when you're in the B2B uh, industry as we are. This used to be um, how companies marketed themselves in the customer service industry. It was all uh, stock photos of uh, smiling ladies in headsets, uh, everything hunky-dory. And I remember when we started out building Sendes, we had to get our, my third co-founder, Alexander, to join us. And he uh, spent a few weeks researching the customer service industry. And he looked at, at the imagery. He looked at the, uh, how these companies, how they branded themselves, and basically said, no, no way. Like, I'm never going to join a company for this industry. I'm never going to work in the industry that uses these kind of brands. But this is very much how a lot of B2B software companies are branding themselves. I don't know how this stuff works. I don't know who finds authenticity in this. I don't know who believes in these kind of, this kind of imagery. For us, building a company, it was very important to build something differently. So we went with a completely different brand. We went with this guy. We call him our mentor. Um, we uh, it got inspired by the Laughing Buddha. We gave him a headset, man boobs, everything, and called us the new face of customer service. And that brand has followed us all along the way. We, all the way to our uh, listing on the New York Stock Exchange earlier this year, a much more human brand to, to remind ourselves that businesses are people too. That when we sell to a business, we don't only sell to that business, we also sell to the people in that organization. Um, that kind of thinking has followed us in everything that we have done. Um, and I'm going to show you a short video and advertisement uh, that we've been using that shows, not only, um, that shows not only how we think about these things, how we think about our customers and how we think about our brand, but how we think this is an important lesson for all companies out there. Has your relationship seen any hard times? Well, yeah. I think every business goes through hard times with their customers. When we first met, his customer service was just awful. I didn't think I had the time or the resources for it. I would call. She would call. I would email. I was not very good at listening in those days. I, I was very overwhelmed. Oh. So, I started complaining. I told my bridge club, my sister Lorraine, and my 41,000 Twitter followers. That hurt. Very public. So, what happened? Well, that's when I got Zendesk for my customer service. That made it a real relationship. Zendesk helped me become the business I always wanted to be. I like it when he gives me the business. Don't, no, don't be old-fashioned. No, 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 it didn't mean anything. Don't I told you. Thank you. Um, all righty. Um, these were three small pieces of advice from, uh, from uh, the book, from, when we, uh, from our journey building Sendesk. I also want to be just very open and straightforward in that there's no right way of building a, uh, or no single way, right way of building a startup. Um, I come with my proposals, my ideas, my concepts, my free golden rules, and all that thing. But there are many, many different ways to build a startup. And I think we've learned that, uh, lived the startup life in uh, San Francisco and uh, in Silicon Valley. Um, I also just want to say that it's important when you build a startup to remember that it's a big, big experience. Um, you have very, very little chance of success building a company. Uh, most startups die before uh, they get through their early fundings, and uh, there's only like maybe up to 1% chance of success. So it is important to 
enjoy the journey, to, to enjoy what kind of fantastic experience it is, meeting all these people, participating in events like this, learning from other people, and grow as a person as you build a company because there's very little chance that you will actually succeed with what you're doing. So <laughs> make, sure, make sure to enjoy the journey. And with that, thank you very much. We will have little previews of the book lying around here on the tables. No? Yes? <laughs> and uh, you can read more about the book at startupland.com, uh, and you will see it in shops coming uh, this December. Thank you very much. <laughs>